Erev Tov Chavrin. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We are looking at an article that just came out on Arut Shiva, IsraelNationalNews.com. And it states here, Switzerland lists sanctions against Iran. Uh, Switzerland, uh, Switzerland uh, will on Thursday officially list sanctions against Iran that had been suspended since January 2014. The government announced on Wednesday, according to Reuters, the federal council government wishes today steps to be seen as a sign of its support for the implementation of the nuclear agreement and its interest in deepening bilateral relations with Iran and a statement quoted by the news agency. Of course, Iran is already in violation of the agreement and it's kind of interesting to see that they're willing to lift sanctions even as in light of this, these facts being brought out. Uh, Switzerland will also introduce a new exemption clause that lets uh, Bernie implement UN Security Council resolutions on Iran according to Reuters. The government said Switzerland wishes to promote a broad political and economic exchange with Iran, but would monitor in implementation of the nuclear deal. Well, they must not be monitoring it too well. What do you think? Uh, should implementation of the agreement fail, the federal council reserves the right to reintroduce the lifted measures, it said. Several European countries have taken steps to renew its ties with Iran following the nuclear deal with world powers. Last week, Italian Foreign Minister um, Paolo uh, Guinantoloni held talks with officials in Tehran, uh, the latest in a series of European officials seeking closer trade ties with the Islamic Republic there. as something... Uh, you can catch the rest of this article on our Israeli News Live uh, Facebook page there, where we post these comments there. Also in North Korea, an article here, um, courtesy of Brother Kyle there, NBC News, North Korea appears to build a second uranium centrifuge hall at Yongbyong site. Uh, says here, North Korea appears to have made a major upgrade to its main nuclear facility that could double the country's capacity to produce weapon-grade uranium, a defense analyst firm said Tuesday. Uh, the secretive state appears to have put into operation a second centrifuge hall in its Yongbyon site around 50 miles north of Pyongyang, according to the analysis of the new satellite images by IHS Janes. Centrifuges are an essential part of the enriching uranium used for nuclear energy uh, plants and atomic bombs, but North Korea is believed to have around 10 nuclear warheads, but not the missile technology to deliver them. But believe me, they're definitely working on that. They fired many, many over Japan, the Sea of Japan, and uh, their capabilities are certainly increasing. All they have to do, if nothing else, is take it on a nuclear, or take it on a submarine and launch it against the United States. Um, Anyway, so that, that kind of wraps that up there. Also, Russia, Russian warships have docked in Iran. Uh, this here coming on the Washington Free Beacon uh, says Russian warships docked in Iran for war training. Uh, Iranian military leader on the, on, only the dead body of the American troops realized the power of Iran. He states, two warships, warships have docked in northern Iran for a series of naval training exercises with the Islamic Republic. According to the Persian language reports translated by the CIA's Open Source Center, the two Russian ships docked in Iran uh, Anzali port on Sunday and will hold joint naval exercise during the three-day stay of the warships in Iran, according to a Persian language report in Iran's state-controlled FARS news agency. Uh, the Russian warships uh, Volgandonsk and the uh, Mahakalala docked on Anzali, Port near the Caspian Sea, the fourth naval zone of the afternoon on August the 9th. The report says the war exercises come just weeks after Iran and global powers linked a nuclear accord that will provide Iran with billions of dollars in sanctions relief in return for slight restrictions on the country's nuclear program. Uh, Russian uh, and Iran agreed earlier this year to begin construction on several new nuclear power plants. Russia has also agreed to sell Iran a controversial advanced missile defense system that can prevent attacks by Western powers. Uh, and that's the S-300 missile defense system that has already been sold to them and, if I'm not mistaken, has already been delivered as well. Uh, but anyway, that's the updates that we've been looking at here recently, the, the main ones that we have been seeing. Also, this weekend, we will be bringing in to you, those of you that watch the New Institute of Biblical Research, a better uh, clarify our stand 
on the Institute's research and what we actually do. There's many people that have misunderstood uh, some of the uh, points that we have been researching on and some of the other non-canonized uh, books of the Bible there, but we want to clarify that because some people say, gosh, what are the, is the noon turning into new age? No, we're not. We do not believe in reincarnation or anything like that, but what we are looking at, and I think it's very important, is the fact that our own canonized Bible clearly says, if there be one among you who is spiritual or prophet, and what he says comes to pass, then fear him, for the Lord is with him. And that's something that we see in some of these books here that were not part of the Bible, at least currently, since the Vatican, actually, or Constantine, when the church, state, religion actually put together the Bible they did back many years ago. Some of these books were part of the Bible before this particular time, but they were taken out or removed altogether or whatever the case may be. But what we are seeing, other than some of the teachings that do match our own Bible, we are also seeing extremely important prophetic information in these books that have already come to pass, things that recently in our time or things that clearly are evident about the age we live in. And we want to bring this out to you so you better understand our stance on these things. We can't authenticate everything that we see there, but what we are looking at are things that matter to us as believers in this end time. Remember, we are the Noon Institute of Biblical Research, and that's what we're doing is researching and bringing you that information that we find and discover as well. So we trust that it's a blessing for you and those that have been worried so much over the fact that we did take a stand ourselves personally. We don't hold that to anyone else. We took a stand personally, though, that we didn't want to be a part of eating meat. But let me remind you of one thing that maybe we forget about. You know, the whole cause of the fall of mankind was breaking a dietary law. Think about that. That's what plunged the human race into the situation we are in today. God said, thou shalt not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, not even to touch it. At least I think that's what he said there. I'm sorry about that. So, you hear so many things, sometimes you forget. You, I'm not reading it directly, so I apologize. But anyway, but he said not to eat of it thereof. And yet, Adam and Eve both disobeyed and did contrary to what God said to do. That plunged the human race to the place we are today. So I think it does matter in the sight of God what we do eat. But what we choose ourselves is not something that we say you have to choose. Because God has put us all here on a free moral agency. We have a choice to make in our own lives. That's why he says he put the animals in our hand. The fear of them is upon us, or they're, you know, they fear us. So the thing is, is what we decide to do is up to us. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching the Noon Institute, excuse me, Israeli News Live. I've got to give, remember which one we're doing here, guys. Anyway, we love you guys. Shalom. God bless you. If you do believe these things that we're, uh, that we're speaking to you, please be a part of this ministry and news broadcast. Support it. We do need your support. Many people do leave when they don't like the things that they want to hear. But we've never been guilty of tickling ears. We want to tell you the truth, at least what we see to be the truth. And that's what we'll continue to do, is try to share with you what we believe to be the truth of God. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom. Good evening.